Hey there, Internet. So I have mocked everything up. Here's my setup. Got some strap clamps holding my blocks to this table. Um, I've got the motor on this thing. It's quite flimsy. I'm a little worried about that. But that's... Um, clamped down to this cast iron table and um, well, down here I've got my feed and that feeds in and out of my wheel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to do a, um, a four facet grind on this ratty old drill bit and uh, see how it comes out. So let me put the camera on the tripod and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind the primary angle first. That's gonna have a four degree relief and then I'll do the secondary angle which should have like a 15 degree relief. I really don't know what I'm doing. It's uh, it's hitting. So, so this is the reason I'm, I'm glad I mocked this up because I tried to I tried to get the center to coincide with this center distance between the uh, the center of the tool and the center of the bar to coincide with the center of the grinding spindle. But you can see right here that it's hitting, or it would hit. So I actually, I can't get the position that I need because I, I have to move the motor either up. I guess if, just wondering which angles will change. I guess I can move it up. <laughs> None of this is set up with any level of precision whatsoever. It's all just clamped together, roughly. There you go. Okay, now will that clear? Yeah, that'll clear. Okay, so assuming assuming that I didn't change any of the angles too much, I can still attempt to do this back relief. You can see I just have a little bit left. The webbing seems huge. So I don't know if that's a problem with my angles. Uh, it just seems really gigantic. Uh, I can try to split point it, but I haven't tried that in a long time. The other concern I have is the the width doesn't look the same. Yeah, you know, I just don't know what I'm doing. I think it's the main thing. So, since I have nothing to lose, let's throw it in the drill and see what happens. The drill. All right, I'm gonna just uh, pucker a hole in this thing. See how it goes. It cuts. Good. 
Ja. Aha. The culprit. You can see the chip welding right here on the back relief. So it, it might it might be beneficial for me to actually <laughs> check the angles on the thing cuz uh th that is definitely rubbing and so my back relief angle was no good. I've made worse holes. It's not horrid. Not great. So that's the first test. Uh, more work to do. And I got to get the angles right. So I, um, it, I had it skewed out this way. Uh, so I got to bring it back. So I'm just going to make that adjustment real quick and see, uh, see if that fixes everything. Okay, I was off about four degrees uh, this way. So I've made that adjustment. Um, the table was actually running pretty true, but the, um, the bar was off on the table, which means that the swing of the arm was, was off. So I'm gonna do this again. You can see, you can, well maybe you can see, let me zoom in. You can see the angle that I, the initial angle that I ground in here is, is way off. It really doesn't have any back relief. So here we go. That, that doesn't look right. The webbing is even bigger. Contact. It, it, it seems like I have it, it clocked wrong. Like, this should go straight across and should intersect with the grind there. Whereas this, it just doesn't look right. You know what, I'm kind of interested to see if it cuts. It's real funky looking, let's see what happens. <laughs> Not a round hole, but it cuts. This is not a round hole. You can see it was wandering all over the place. Again, because I, I, I didn't have it in there clocked right. So we'll uh, make another attempt at clocking it. It's got to go more across. All right, so here's the my next effort. Get the camera to focus where I want it to. So you see that bit of black on the top facet. I still don't think I quite have it right, but uh, I am new to this. So uh, I did a whole bunch of experimentation. <laughs> That's why there's like six facets on here. But I did the primary and then I did the secondary. Check it up. See what we make. Do we get do we get chip welding or do we get an ovular hole? It's a good looking chip. I wouldn't say that's I wouldn't say that's perfectly round, but somewhat okay. Let's drill something else. What about a... And contact. Oh, it's not bad. That's 
not terrible. So that's three three attempts. I th I think uh, I think that'll work. Now, um, I really didn't mean to uh, make a video about sharpening drill bits. Um, <laughs> I really wanted to test my setup on the on the grinding machine. So here's what I've learned so far. The first thing is um, this column, and I knew this would be this way. I I, I, uh, I try to use my some other stuff, but um, this is this is what worked for the dimensions and the table that I have, which is which is actually a table saw. Um, but you know, I can. Th this is this is not rigid, uh, really at all. This thing is very twisty. Um, and I kind of knew that going in, but uh, it actually didn't do bad at all. I, I'm pretty surprised at uh, how well it actually um, performed, considering how wonky it is. It's, it's, I'd say it's about one eighth inch uh, U channel up here on the bottom. is sturdy. It's a, it's about a quarter inch piece of plate, but the the U channel, uh, it really doesn't have any torsional rigidity. Um, I'm glad I mocked this up on the table. The main reason is I really, I still don't really understand what this distance needs to be between the spindle and the shaft. Uh, my guesstimate that it was 150 millimeters was not right because it ended up rubbing. So I'm glad I mocked this up. Um, I, I, I've, I reached out, actually reached out to Robert and Zeddy to see if he can take some measurements and let me know what the right dimensions are and the proportions are. Um, I think that the, um, the, the, the way I have the block set up and the amount of table travel I have works, but these should definitely be, they should be further apart. Um, because if, if I only have a half an inch of travel, um, this, this, I, did, I don't think this distance is going to work. Um, the, the kind of surprising thing to me is when you look at the pictures, um, of the setups that are like this, where it's roughly 90 degrees, I mean, it, the the arm is really close to the casting, so there's there's not a tremendous amount of distance that 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 way. Um, now, uh, my the way I've set these Morse taper two um, uh, grinding wheel holders, you know, it kind of pushes everything out of the way from the grinding wheel, which maybe isn't ideal, and it kind of skews the proportions a little bit. Um, you know, I think the um, the motor's working fine. I think the um, the location of the switch was definitely a problem. I had to reroute this this control box. Maybe use a, a longer piece of wire. And um, again, I really need to have a high level of comfort before I attempt to weld up a, a, a frame. I'm going to weld it up out of some square tube, and uh, I may actually use a piece of uh, four inch by quarter inch steel tubing for the for the for the wheel now while this works i think it definitely has promise and again it's i saved uh, 800 bucks buying the rest of the machine since i only bought this part um i i would like to uh see if there's a way that i can have a table that runs underneath here uh, maybe on a rack and pinion and i can somehow easily move move this off uh and have a table that just runs this way as a, as a as a much simpler um, style uh, grinding table maybe even to do some really rudimentary and very very light surface grinding kind of stuff on some very small parts so you know i think um yeah i think buying this um there's nothing wrong with it uh, it works fine uh, i had issues with the first one they sent me a replacement that's great uh, i need to make a replacement um, not a replacement, but I need to make a, a tool holder for lathe tools. And, um, you know, as far as the, the mechanism, the feed mechanism right now, this is working well enough that I'll probably be able to live with it for some time. So I'm really debating, do I go through and, and do all the work to, uh, to do this feed mechanism when I, when I have the table, I'm not using the table for anything else. The, the big, the big thing. I guess that I'm worried about is that <laughs> I can't use the table saw with this setup, but I rarely use the table saw anyway. So yeah, I mean, it grinds, um, the, the finish on the grind looks good. Uh, this is a, I think this is a 80 grit wheel. 
and um, that that did that did pretty good. And then with these other attachments, um, uh, I made an attachment for these disc style ones. I have a bunch of different grits of this disc style, and this this is great for just kind of hand uh, hand sanding because the um, because it's a variable speed motor, I can really get the speed low and I can just touch stuff up if I want to take a lathe tool, carbide lathe tool and just touch it up here by hand, it's super easy to do and I just I just slot this into the the uh, Morse taper tooth spindle and, and off I go. So yeah, I, I think uh, overall this is, um, you know, it, it could be developed quite a lot further. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's worthwhile to put a whole lot of effort into it. Um, I think, you know, for, for 150 bucks or 170 bucks, whatever it was with the shipping, um, you know, it, it would be really hard to make one of these. So it's it's probably worth it. So yeah, I guess um, leave me a comment down below if you think I should um, put more work into this, or uh, if you think I should just leave it the way it is because it's working. Anyway, thanks for watching.